So, you want to know about my trip to New York? Well, let's start with day one. After emerging from the Lincoln Tunnel to a sea of skyscrapers, we arrived at the hotel, the district. Super fancy. Our room was on the very top 32nd floor with a view that, well, look for yourself. Cause our hotel was only two blocks away from Times Square. Yes, I said two blocks. We headed there first. We stopped at Carlos's bakery where I had the famous cannoli. It was scrumptious. Next, Times Square. Crazy, <laughs> hectic, <laughs> loud, <laughs> After that, we walked a lot, and finally ended up at the plaza. In my opinion, the most posh hotel in New York City. They even had a whole store dedicated to Eloise. I just adore her. And outside was Central Park, the home to many movie filming spots. Right there, that's Blair and Chuck's wedding spot from Gossip Girl. In the park, they even had an African tribal dance circle going on. The vibes were lit and it was just super fun to be a part of. Turning in tonight, my dad and my brother got tired, so they went back to the hotel. While my mom and I stayed out and ventured around Times Square, stopping in a four-story Forever 21. That's just day one. Our destination, Statue of Liberty. We took the boat cruise over. The views from the boat were phenomenal. You got to see all of New York City from the shoreline. <laughs> then hopped on another bus to Ellis Island, a really cool historical area where immigrants came before being led into our country. After a morning of history, we were pushed into an afternoon of walking, passing the New York Film Academy, the famous bull, and stopping for a bubble tea that wasn't that great. We head into my video and life philosophy role model's office, Casey Neistat. I didn't want to be rude or intrusive by waiting outside his office for him to come out, so here's my reaction to seeing his office. Okay, Casey's? Casey Neistat's office is right there. Um, to beam. Pretty crazy. So I imagine his studio is right up there. That's super awesome. Because my brother was getting crabby, we headed to lunch in Little Italy at the oldest pizza place in all of New York City, Lombardi's. It opened in 1903. Feeling like an Italian tourist, we waltzed the streets of Little Italy. <laughs> Moving forward, we landed in Chinatown. To be honest, it's kind of dirty, but I saw models getting their picture taken, so that was kind of cool. When everyone got to the point of exhaustion, we headed back to the subway and it ended up in Bryant Park. Bryant Park pretty much sums up the reason why I love New York City. It's quaint, there's always something going on, they were showing a movie for free. Interesting food, I had a green tea ice cream and a fish cone. Day disappearing tonight, we went for dinner at a fast food sushi place called Wasabi, where you can pick out what sushis you want individually and head right out the door. And finally, we ended the night again wandering Times Square. Okay. Day 3. 
Street. We had breakfast at a local restaurant. I finally got to have a New York City bagel. We headed to the 9-11 museum. It was a bit dark and depressing, but I believe it's something everyone needs to witness. Going outside, I captured the beautiful memorial architecture while gliding my hand over the names of people who died too young. Afterwards, to lighten the mood, we headed to the Balloon Saloon, a famous balloon store in Tribeca. Then, lunch. Black Tap Bar, known for their beer and burgers and shakes. The line to get in itself was 45 minutes long. I ordered a California burger and a birthday cake crazy shake. It had a whole piece of cake on top of it, and it was delicious. Yum! And in the bathroom, everyone signs their name, so I added my mark as well. Feeling stuffed, we hopped back on the subway to get ready for the night of theater magic. I was going to see Phantom of the Opera. To put it simply, the show was stunning. I snuck some photos of the cast on my phone during bows, and after, I got to meet the Phantom. He was super nice, and you could definitely tell he loves what he does. Then right across the street, Dear Evan Hansen was showing, and I got to see some of the stars that, of that show come out. And finally, fell asleep to the sounds of New York City and thoughts of what it would be like to work on Broadway. From NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie, live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Day 4, I woke up super early. Strolling into Rockefeller Plaza, I felt my movie love kick in. Bright lights everywhere, crew people scurrying around, and a whole crowd of people excited to be on national television. I wore my bright yellow sun hat to stand out in the crowd. We stood by these younger dance girls that got asked to dance on national television, so we got on TV a lot. And the best part? I met Hoda and Matt Boyer, and saw Dylan. It was even her birthday. I met- I even made Hoda laugh. The whole gang was so nice and friendly, including this guy who was in charge of getting the crowd excited. When the show was over, we stopped at the Nintendo store as well. When we arrived back at the hotel, we decided to go to the Yankees game. The game was going great, even though the Yankees were losing, when around the seventh inning, it started to rain. A little. Okay. A lot. And when I say a lot, I mean the sky opened up and uh, the rain started falling in sheets. Everyone was scrambling down the stairs to the concessions when a thunder bolted out of the sky. A little... We waited a little, but it wasn't clearing up. At all. So we sprinted to the subway when, under the bridge, the loudest strike of thunder I've heard in my life struck. It shook the ground. After a wet ride to the hotel, we dried off and walked to Times Square one last time, and then ended and ended our New York City trip at Buca de Beppo. I had the cheese ravioli. Then for the very last time, I ended my dream trip to the beautiful night view and the sound of taxis going down the street.